Hello, everybody. How are you? Thank you for answering me. Really appreciate that. It's always nice to speak in Europe. Hello, camera person. How's it going? I'm going to be moving around a lot, so just get ready for it. This is a little bit longer of a walk to the podium than I would have expected. All right, I want to make sure that we're OK here, guys, because um, I've got two talks on ASP.NET MVC, and I want to make sure that we set expectations. So if you, I, don't, I think it's, that's how you spell it. If, um, if you need to go, that's OK. Just go ahead and go. I want to make sure you understand, though. You probably read the, the, the directions. This is a basics introduction 101 type class. They marked it in the thing as a 300 class, but they called it a 300 basics introduction. So that's kind of like a 300 level basics introduction to calculus. But this is the basics course. So we're going to start a file new project, and we'll go from there. Then this afternoon, you've got a talk from Fritz Onion, who will be talking about converting MVC to converting web forms to MVC. And then after that, I'll go and do advanced super ninja trips. See, he already left. That guy left. This is the advanced course. We just wanted to get rid of that guy. <laughs> Somebody tell him. <laughs> now, he left uh, probably because I just said it was a basics course. And it is. But I think that even if you're using MVC on a regular basis, you'll probably learn something. But I just wanted to set expectations that I am assuming that you have yet to do things with MVC, or perhaps you've downloaded it, played around with it, but that you're not actually making money right now professionally with, uh, with MVC. That'll, that won't be annoying at all, actually, if we do that. I'm going to probably mute that for a second. All right, so let's do this. I'm assuming that you've used ASP.NET, and you're familiar generally with, uh, with web development. Thank goodness that I'm up there as well, because you not being able to see me right now, I'm in two places. Is there any way to make it so that fills up the screen? I guess not. Oh my god. <laughs> when did this happen? Somebody needs to make a call. <laughs> oh no. All right, well hopefully uh, you guys will be able to see this. Is this how it was for, uh, for Anders' thing? I was asleep. Not here. I wasn't like asleep here. I love Anders. Is he in the room? All right, let's do it like this. So I'm going to say file new project, and I'll bring up an ASP.NET MVC application. And we're going to do it like that, because that screen is way too small. And this dialog box pops up. This dialog box is owned by ASP.NET MVC. And I point that out because when you say file new project, that first dialog box is owned by Visual Studio. As soon as I selected MVC as a new project type, and this popped up, this dialog is owned by MVC. This is a little bit of an important thing. This dialog is an extension point. You can actually get in here and change things. It's giving me two choices. It's saying, yes, I want to create a unit test project, which is interesting. It's the first um, ASP.NET application pr um, project type that actually lets you make a unit test at the same time. And there's a little link down here in the corner that says additional info. That'll take you off to a blog post that will give you details about how you can get into that dropdown. So if you want to use like mbunit or xunit.net or nunit or any other unit testing software, or maybe your company has your own unit testing software, you can get in there and then make an initial test project that uses the unit testing system that you want. So that's the first choice. Yes, create a unit test project. Or no, I'm a bad person. So I'm going to click <laughs> no. And this is going to create our first ASP.NET project. I was asking them earlier what the resolution of the screen was. I said, because uh, I always like to know the resolution of the screen. Apparently, it's 16 by 9. And they said, oh, hey, I disappeared. Thank you, video guy. We did not need to see that every time I turned around. That was, that was bad. Um, the, uh, the resolution of this screen is like 3,072 by 1,000, I don't know, million something something. It's like super high def. 
I did not know if my machine would push that kind of resolution, but then I realized he was telling me the native resolution of the projector. So we've got a couple of folders here that you don't typically see in an ASP.NET application. You've got controllers, models, and views. That explains the whole MVC thing. Now we could go through and I could show you slides that would be kind of like, you know, educational slides about what exactly we're seeing. And I'll show you actually the kind of slides that I could show you. I could be like, yeah, see, we, maybe we could get a picture of me in front of this. See, this camera guy just left. He just pointed it that way and then took off. I don't know if that means I'm being filmed anymore at all, so I can probably do anything I want to. We'll see if that shows up online later. Maybe he's mad. Maybe he's mad. I could show you things like this, and maybe someone who has a camera could take here, take a picture of me explaining MVC. <laughs> this is an action pose. Right? And then, the, then we got to get another shot of the entire room who's like, model view controller. Oh, thank you, three circles. Oh, thank goodness you put up a slide with three circles. Now I understand it. I did not understand model view controller, and those three circles did not help me. So I'm going to try something a little bit different. All right, let's do this. Let's go and grab our home controller. We're going to run this application, see what this guy looks like. This is the Hello World application. Just kind of, this is what you get out of the box. Welcome to MVC. We get two tabs. We can switch between them. And you can notice that little slash home slash about. Nice clean URL that doesn't broadcast .aspx. So you can't actually look at this and tell what it's written in just by looking at the URLs. This is a selling point. This is a good thing. You know the guys that run Stack Overflow, Jeff Atwood? When they first started stackoverflow.com, one of the uh, first compliments they got was from a guy uh, named Obi Fernandez who said, was this written in Rails? And they thought that was really great because the entire thing is written in link to SQL and ASP.NET MVC. But a Rails guy moved around the site and he felt that it had that Rails aesthetic. Now, this isn't about Rails, but it's about the new web aesthetic. And ASP.NET MVC supports that. And people like that a lot. And ASP.NET 4, as I'll probably be able to show you tomorrow, allows you to have um, these kind of URLs in web forms as well. So I say slash home slash about. Let's go ahead and come over here, hit a breakpoint there, and I'm going to just hit F5. So rather than showing three circles and reading books and stuff, we'll learn, it, uh, we'll learn MVC this way. So I'm going to click on slash home slash about, and I got here. So you can learn a lot by not looking at the manual. We just hit slash home slash about, and then I'm here. So I hit I navigated in the browser, a miracle happened, and I'm sitting right here. How exactly is this going on, and how is this going to help me learn MVC better? Let's go and spend some time in the call stack, because I think that every good technical presentation that's held in a, in a cathedral or whatever this place is uh, deserves a Microsoft guy saying, look how simple it is. <laughs> you see? It's just so obvious. All right. We are sitting in home controller 